The following is a presentation of TFNN, live at TFNN, The Money Masters. The Money Masters. Good morning, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the February 21st, terrific Thursday edition of the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I'm grateful for your presence here today, folks. And my outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better Money Master and to provide you with the tools that empower human potential. Because, folks, you have an amazing potential within yourself. Each of us do. It's usually more than we even give ourselves credit for. And it's all about taking advantage of that potential and providing a set of tools that simply are going to increase your probability for success. That is what it's all about out here. We'd love to hear from you. Our call number is 877-927-6648. Let's go uh, take a look at these markets here right now. We've got the uh, Dow trading down 57 points out of 13,869. The S&P down about 10 points out at 1502. Trade out 1502.36 right now. So let's go see what the S&P is doing. Let's start off with the S&P. Then we'll take a look at the uh, SPA here, what we can see here on the S&P, real key reversal day uh, yesterday as the S&P has extended itself. Uh, that is a, a bearish, uh, engulfing bear sash candle. You can see the close of the session before on the prior day, that's the February 19th high, closing at a session high is 15 30.94 is what it uh, closed at. The S&P opening up at 15, 30, uh, 94. And so you've got a bearish engulfing. What's a bearish engulfing? That is when this uh, red body here engulfs the entire prior session out here. That is a bearish reversal sign. We know that the bears are certainly out today. They're having some foul through. So long as the S&P cash index does not close above 15, 19, 79, you will have a confirmation that a market top is in place out there. Right now, trading out at 15.02. The uh, S&P here is back inside the uh, 15.04 level. That was a, a, a just a real small area of uh, resistance slash support. Once it was broken through, that's actually the high from February the uh, first out there trading below that. The uh, black line on my chart, that happens to be the uh, line for uh, gold. Uh, typically, the S&P, if you take a look at the chart. Now, the, you have to just put in perspective here. The black line here is just the directional. It has nothing to do with really the price. Uh, uh, and so, but you can see is what the S&P typically does is it tracks pretty well to the price of commodities. Of course, we know the price of commodities have uh, been hammered here. A gold flat right now, trade out at 15.78, and silver's up 11 cents out there. Of course, if you were listening on the first show, we know that uh, gold and silver have gotten into the oversold uh, territory, so we need to expect to see that start to work its way off. However, it does want lower price out there. If, let's go take a look at the uh, retracement. So let's take a look at retracements here, assuming that we get follow through today. Let's take a look at what we're looking at. We're going to come from the uh, swing point low, the January, I'm sorry, the uh, November 16th uh, candle. That was a key reversal day, uh, all the way up to the uh, February 19th level. The 0 0.382 retracement takes you right into the high of January 2nd. The number is 1459. The actual high of, uh, as it would be the 0 0.382 level, the uh, actual high of January 2nd is 1462.43. So I suspect that is where the ES, uh, the ES, the S and P cash wants to get to. Now, what it'll have to do before it'll get down there, it's going to have to close below the February 4th lows. That is uh, 1495, uh, 1490502. We're going to call 1495 even Stephen out there. I like that. Let's go uh, take a look at the uh, spy here. I'll take a look at the uh, ETFs. And uh, give me a moment here, and then we'll go back. We'll take a look at each of these here. So we'll just try to break things down one at a time. The uh, SPY is also getting that bearish uh, candle signal yesterday, gapping down this morning. That adds to that uh, candle signal. So you've got some confirmation. So long as the uh, SPYs do not today close above 152.37, you will have received a reversal signal out here. We know that the 1.272 butterfly is in place for the SPYs. It's still in place here, even though it actually moved up to about a 1.414 expansion off of September 14th down to the lows on November 16th out there. A volume yesterday, uh, not only was it bearish uh, from a uh, candlestick uh, signal, you also had volume off of the top 160 million 
versus the $95 million that it made on the uh, session of February the uh, 19th, a couple of trading sessions ago. So not necessarily a, a good scene out here. Uh, the spies, they really, the only line of, uh, of possible support that it has is at the uh, February 4th low. That is 149.43. gets below that. And let's take a look at retracements. We'll do the same thing, but coming off of November 16th, all the way back up to the high that was established here uh, yesterday in February 19th out there at 153.28. The dead cat bounce right back to the uh, top of that January 2nd level. 146.16 is the exact 0.382. The number on the January 2nd high is 146.15. How's that work? Off by a penny. That is where the uh, spy is headed to. Let's go back over on the indexes this time. Let's go take a look at the uh, Dow. Let's go see what the uh, the leader, uh, the uh, leader, the uh, the uh, top line uh, number out here. The Dow giving us obviously reversal signals yesterday, having follow through today. Uh, the Dow here trying to crack. Looks like it has already cracked it. The low that I'm looking at is the February 1st uh, low out here. Uh, you know, the question is, is the Dow going to go ahead and consolidate sideways? Well, the consolidation would basically be the consolidation low here would be at the uh, 13,860.58. You're trading right now at 13,857. So it's penetrating that area. You get a close below 13,860.58. That's going to uh, set up a run down to the 13,452. It actually will set up a run really to the uh, top of January 2nd. That would be 13,000. 142.71 out there. Uh, the uh, so got reversal signals here in the Dow getting follow through today. We know what it is we're looking at. Let's go take a look at the ETF structure. Let's look at the uh, diamonds, see what the numbers are on the diamonds. The diamonds here truly holding that 1.272 butterfly, never really even coming close to breaking above it to suggest that there was a breakout inside the uh, Dow. Of course, you got a, a reversal candle here yesterday. Volume, some volume off the top. Volume, not too bad really in the Dow. Six million shares to the uh, downside yesterday after making a high the prior session with 3.9 and making a high with 3.8 on February the uh, 13th out here. So the number that the uh, diamonds are trying to uh, break below the February, I would use the January 31st level. Let's see, that low is 138.32. 138.32. Yeah, use 138.32 right now, trading out at 138.26. A close below that. That says that what the Dow wants to do in quick order is that, whoops, didn't mean to do that, is at least make the 0.382 retracement again coming off of the November 16th low. We'll use the high of February 13th out there. It says 134.27. It'll go just a bit lower here on its first leg down, which would take you into that January 2nd high, 133.86. That is on the uh, diamonds. Volume, let's see, it's checking on volume here this morning. Two million shares in 45 minutes of trading. So it's got volume most certainly behind the uh, move out here. On the daily chart, we can see uh, nowhere near an oversold uh, condition at all. Uh, so that is on the Dow Diamonds. Let's go back and take a look at the, uh, let's go take a look at the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 having a big day yesterday to the uh, downside, although it has been really the strongest uh, index out there. Uh, so that will be, uh, you know, when the reversal is done, uh, it will be the small caps, I think, that you want to. That's, that's with, the, with the information I have right now, it will be the small caps that you're going to want to uh, take a look at uh, trading to the upside when the reversal is over. Uh, yesterday here, moving down uh, uh, with wide price spread, uh, that uh, taking back uh, all of uh, all the way back to February 11th here with regard to uh, trading, really getting back into the top of the uh, February 1st uh, candle out here. So the uh, next area of uh, support on the uh, Russell 2000, it's going to be your January 31st level. That low is 895.75. A break below that. That'll send you all the way back to the January 2nd high, at least. That is 873.99. Uh, if we do take a look at the uh, retracement here, first I'll just do, you, we'll use the same retracement, which is coming off of the uh, November 16th uh, level out here. On Inside the Russell 2000, the dead cat bounce takes you into that 867, just a little bit below, penetrating into the uh, candle from uh, January 2nd out there. And I suspect where all the markets want to trade to is back to the December 31st lows. It's just, it, you know, you, it, it's just like an elevator, you know, whether you're riding it up or riding it down and you've got your first levels of uh, support or resistance uh, out here. In this case here, the first potential level of support. Once it cracks through, in this case here, the Russell 2000 below 894.34, its next level is going to be testing that wide-ranging bar 
from January 2nd. If we go take a look at the ETF structure, let's go look at the IWM, see what uh, the IWM is uh, doing yesterday, having some volume off of the top with that uh, bearish uh, candle out there, real reversal signal yesterday, yesterday being a key reversal day inside the IWM. Volume was 41 million shares to the uh, downside. Uh, that was after the prior session as it made its uh, all-time high yesterday and, and uh, the day before out at the 92.03 level. Did it with 29.339. It got just a tad higher yesterday. Uh, got up to 92.68 out there on the IWM. But then you've got the uh, reversal with volume. Uh, right now, the uh, potential support, let me get rid of some lines out here, make it a little bit easier if you are following along on uh, Tiger TV. And if you're listening in on the radio or maybe your mobile device to tfnn.mobi, thanks so much for uh, doing that. And remember, you can always catch the uh, live stream of this show by going to the homepage at tfnn.com. Over on the right-hand side, you will see... Uh, three little uh, buttons, little smartphone devices. Click on that. You'll see the uh, live stream. And I do want to say, I'm remiss here. I didn't do it in the open. I wanted to uh, uh, say thank you to everyone that attended uh, last night's uh, workshop. It was standing room only in the uh, clubhouse. It was great to have uh, been able to have taken my uh, toy out for a uh, drive yesterday and to have shared with so many people, with so many people, a, uh, a set of trading, uh, a trading plan, a, a trading uh, system, uh, a set of indicators that are very visual and easy to identify that mark, market tops and uh, bottoms, uh, signif sometimes very significant uh, tops and uh, bottoms out there. So I do want to express my gratification for everybody that attended. And for those of you that missed out, I'm sorry that you did. I hope that you take advantage the next time that we uh, provide uh, that same uh, workshop, because that workshop, I think that was one of my uh, better workshops out there. If we take a look at the IWM uh, and we come off of the uh, uh, off of the uh, swing point low here from uh, November the 16th up to the high of yesterday, you will see the dead cat bounce. The 0.382 gets you into the 86.36 range. It comes right into the uh, gap up, so it'll be right into that January 2nd uh, candle. Uh, the high there is 86.91 and the low is 86.04. That is where the IWM wants to head to. Uh, if we go take a look at the, uh, let's go take a look at the NDX 100. The NDX 100, the Q is really what it is that we're going to be paying attention, where we're going to get a release of information today out here. Now, what, what you need to expect, in my opinion, this is what you need to expect. Uh, the bulls have been rewarded on every single move, uh, uh, every, every single retracement, every single small retracement, what have you. And so, you know, still not a lot of believers on any kind of retracement out here. So you have to expect, you don't have to, I expect, what I expect to see is I expect to see that this is not going to be a straight line down. We're going to see bulls rush in, not rush in, but we're going to see bulls come in and try to uh, buy these uh, corrections, buy these retracements. And eventually, they'll get to the uh, side where they're going to say, oh, geez, I'm not making money when I'm doing that. Well, it's the NDX 100. We get back from this break. We're going to take a look at the NDX 100. Then we're going to go to uh, Marie in Erie, Pennsylvania. The number to be paying attention to on the NDX is 27. 1630. Trading out at 2718 right now. It closed below 2716.30. Says, look out below. I'm coming to test out that uh, December 31st candle on the NDX 100. We'll be right back, folks. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at DirectionFunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. This segment is brought to you by Goldfields. For more information, just click the Goldfields banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The Dow off uh, 63 points right now. So before we went to break, we were taking a look at the NDX 100. And let me just finish up here. So we take a look at the NDX 100. I was talking about the uh, low of January 2nd, that gap up candle. And that low has acted as very, very strong uh, support out here. Uh, you can see today so far that area is being tested. If, in fact, you get a, a close back above, uh, and it is above it right now, a close above the 27.16.30. Then at this stage here, you know, I have to take a look at uh, volumes, but you've got pretty big volume on that gap up day on January 2nd. We'll go peek in on the uh, queues here, uh, but it will say that, okay, it's uh, still holding as an area of support out there. That's what bulls want to be able to see, and bears will get, uh, you want to see it close below 27.16.30. Absolutely. And I'm a, I'm a bear right now, so I want to see it close below 27, 16, 30. But I can't control the markets. I can only read and know where support and resistance is. Inside the queues, it's also very easy to identify uh, the queues here. Let's put that up on the uh, screen. The queues, the price point is 66.48. So far this morning, it's gotten down to 66.53. That is the area of uh, support on the uh, queues as well. Let's go out to Erie, Pennsylvania, to our gal Marie. Marie, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Oh, I'm fine today. Good, good. Uh, uh, and you wanted to take a look at AEP. AEP is uh, is is what? It's a American Electric uh, Power Company. Okay. And uh, tell us what you're doing and how I can best be of assistance to you. Well, I'm I'm really not doing anything. I I noticed it spiked up yesterday when everything else was going down and just. 
curious your thoughts on that. Okay. Are you looking to get in? Yeah, it absolutely did spike up yesterday. Did 3.3 million shares to the uh, upside. Uh, the high that it got to uh, yesterday was 45.89. So just out of curiosity here, I'll put this on a, a longer term chart. Let's see what it was actually uh, doing here. So it's coming up against a uh, swing point on the weekly basis that takes you back to April 30th, 2008. That high, Marie, was 45.95, and yesterday it got up to 45.89. So that is the area that it is uh, taking on here, which is back in uh, April. Uh, also looks like uh, you know, trying to get perhaps up to the swing point that would take you back to the 2007 highs, which would be somewhere between 48.08 to 51.24. Uh, it's had a, a nice, uh, you know, it's had a, a nice run up here. Not a bad looking uh, stock chart here on the uh, monthly uh, basis out here. Uh, let me put it on a, a weekly. If we take a look at the uh, weekly chart, a uh, weekly chart says that a, a pullback on this, even on the weekly chart, you know, it has pretty good volume the week of February 1st out there. Uh, did 24 million uh, shares, so the weekly chart doesn't look uh, too bad as well. It's really tackling the uh, most recent swing point high on the weekly chart, Marie, from October 19, 2012, and that's the $45.41. It's at 45.35 right now. So is this something that you've been looking at because you want to buy it on a pullback, or is there yeah. something you do? Okay. Yeah. So uh, this equity here now, what I on the daily chart, you know, there's a couple. Th the it, it got into the uh, over uh, overbought uh, territory, and there's a there was something that I taught last night at the uh, workshop that I did yesterday that I don't like. However, you don't have the uh, bearish candle, and what I taught last night, it's really it's a two-step approach, and it should always be a, a two-step approach when you're looking for triggers in my opinion, to either enter or exit. Uh, you use, use candlesticks because the bulls and the bears are giving you uh, signals out there, but you don't use candlesticks. They're not, entry ex they're, they're not a trading system alone. You've got to use some other patterns out here, whether it's breaks above swing points or A to B equals CD, whatever it might be. If you're going to take a look at entering uh, this equity, number one, what I would do is I would uh, time it with the uh, market. If we do get some follow through today, uh, what the market, the message of the markets is simply that it wants to start a retracement. And what I might do, what I would do is I would say, okay, I'm going to come in and when the market has, in fact, uh, finished its retracement, what we ought to see with AEP is we ought to see it come down and retest the uh, set of swing points that last held as a support level. And, Marie, that gets back to just like the market itself, which is really January 2nd to December 31st. And on January 2nd out here, this equity went ahead. I'm going to draw the line across the screen here. And what this equity did was it went ahead and it gapped up. Now, when this gapped up, the volume wasn't really that substantial, 3.9 million shares. But nonetheless, that area is really held as a support area. And I would say that your best area for entry right now is right around the $43 and a 14 cent range. If you get it closed below 43.14, then where you'll want to pick it up is somewhere in that December 31st candle, which could be anywhere from 41.92 to 42.73. Now, that all assumes, Marie, that the volume on the way back isn't anything substantial, and so far it really isn't. So, uh, does that help you? Yes, it does. I had another question, uh, if you don't mind waiting. I don't mind at all. If you don't mind waiting, we're going to go back to Marie. We're going to go back to Erie, Pennsylvania. After the break, you've got the Dow down 49, S&P's off 7. We'll be right back. Looks like I've lost my data feed here. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If 
If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow off 47 uh, points here. It's at uh, 1034, and uh, so I am uh, still in my uh, ES Mini uh, trade that I uh, put on at about uh, 501 a.m. this morning. My stop was a, a close below 1398 out there. The uh, close got uh, got challenged for sure. 1498, I should say, uh, got challenged here during this 10 to 10:30 a.m. session as it pushed down to a low 1497.25, but did manage to close at 1503 out there. Let's go back out to uh, Marie in Erie, Pennsylvania. Marie, uh, thanks uh, for holding during that uh, segment. You had some additional questions. Was it on was it on AEP or on something else? Actually, I wanted to get your thoughts back on Goldfield. You were mentioning the the big drop in Goldfield, and they spun off um, uh, two mines in a in a new uh, offering. Okay. Um, that just registered, I think, uh, this morning. Does that change the way you look at this? Well, I on a technical basis, the answer is is no. I mean, we take a look at uh, this this morning. You know, gapping down to 877 here, not a not a good thing at all. And it has some uh, pretty good volume already. 3.3 million shares in an hour's worth of trading. Gap down yesterday with 5.7. So it's going to have even more volume uh, uh, today. Should have more volume today when the uh, session is closed. If we put this on a, a weekly chart here, you know what it's done? It's busted through areas of uh, support that have held out here pretty well. Going back to the 2009 time frame, the April 2009 time frame, and so with this, are you looking to buy this? 
No, uh, actually, I'm just uh, curious because, you know, with the dollar so strong, you would think gold fields would be strong. Yeah, uh, you know, all of the uh, all of the uh, mining stocks are truly getting uh, hammered here. Now, that's a good thing uh, because uh, several of these uh, stocks out here have volume at the highs. And volume at the highs, you know, ideally when you're scanning for stock charts, if you can find stocks that have volume at the highs, uh, you prefer to see volume at the highs versus volume at the lows out there. Uh, what is uh, really nice is eventually they become long-term trades. So it's great for your portfolio, but it's going to have to be as these things really move down. And it looks to me like in the case of gold fields that it wants to run all the way down to the lows in 2008 which, uh, you know, at $4.65, 464 to six ninety eight, that's going to potentially be a nice buy. It just depends on what's happening uh, volume-wise. But I don't know whether gold fields really is the equity to uh, pay attention to. In fact, if I go ahead and put this on a, I'll do this, put this one on a, a monthly uh, chart for you. And if we take a look at this, you see, which, let me erase some things on the, what we don't see in the case of gold fields really is volume at the highs out here. And it would, it would stick out on a uh, stock chart. So my suggestion, uh, I'll help you to go mine for some gold or silver out there. Go through a list of all the gold and silver stocks. Put them on a, a monthly and a, a weekly basis, Marie, and see which ones have high volume highs out there. Those are the ones that you'd want to be taking a look at really getting into. In the case of gold fields, I think this is not that, not that this might not be a good trade, but it, uh, it, you know, it, it doesn't have that, it doesn't have that high volume high. And there, there are several that do out there. Okay. All righty. Hey, thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for calling. Appreciate that. Right. And so, you know, speaking of uh, commodities, let's take a look at uh, some of the uh, commodities out here. Let's go take a look at uh, light sweet crude. We'll start off with uh, crude here. Uh, crude moving down now, and finally, and it's testing its 200-day uh, exponential moving average, also making that dead cat bounce. That is off of the uh, lows here from November the seventh. Low out there, eighty four oh five. The high. Uh, put in here on January 30th out at 98.24. Uh, so it's made the uh, dead cat bounce. It's coming into really what would be the first area of uh, support out here. We'll see if uh, crude can continue to uh, crack. I suspect it is. Uh, uh, we are short uh, light sweet crude in the uh, newsletter. Uh, it looks like uh, crude still has further to run before it gets down into the uh, oversold uh, uh, territory. I expect we'll see uh, crude move down to about $89 and change. doesn't have to do it overnight, but it's had certainly uh, two nice sessions to the uh, downside. If we go back and take a look at uh, silver here right now, uh, silver uh, getting down close to the .786 uh, retracement level. I want to put silver here on a short-term chart right now and see what's going on inside the 30-minute uh, uh, chart out here. Because what we know that it's doing, it's really at this stage here, uh, really just working off the uh, oversold uh, condition that it got into ever since really making lows here yesterday at about uh, 1040 in the uh, morning. Uh, then went ahead and worked it off by moving sideways, uh, which it did between about uh, 10, uh, I'm sorry, 610 in the evening on the 19th, all the way up into about 540 in the morning before it went ahead and took off. Uh, to make a lower low. So when it did that coming into about 10 o'clock yesterday, when it made a little bit lower low, it actually gave you a, a little reversal signal right here. Uh, did that at 2110. That was uh, 2110, 910 in the evening uh, last night. Now when I say a reversal signal, I'm not talking about on the daily chart. I'm talking about on an intraday chart here. A reversal signal enough to say that, okay, you were going to go ahead and get a, a bounce out of here, or at least the move to the downside uh, should be over for a period of time here. And that's exactly what we've seen. We've seen uh, silver just simply move sideways here. That's a nice volume come in on the contract side during the last uh, during the last 30 minute uh, session out here. Uh, so, uh, but do, do, I do not believe that uh, silver has made its lows out here, nor do I believe that uh, gold has. If we take a quick peek in on uh, gold here, here's the 30-minute uh, chart as well. It was a technique that I uh, taught uh, yesterday in the uh, workshop. So, if you're one who are looking for trades, you know you can take last night's workshop. And you can apply it to each of the charts. And I got some emails from folks that actually did this on some trades, which was really a uh, cool uh, thing for me to be able to uh, teach a, a trading, a set of trading tools out there that uh, folks could actually go ahead and uh, put to use. And on the uh, gold contract, the reversal signal came in here at uh, 2110. That was also 910 uh, last evening. You actually got the uh, signal on the uh, following uh, session at uh, 2140 on the 30-minute uh, chart out here, and uh, you know, you make some uh, pretty nice, uh, pretty nice money uh, just uh, simply trading that technique 
uh, that was out there. So I know that uh, people got their money's worth not just from the information, but people got their money's worth just simply from some of the trades that they entered out here. Uh, if we go, uh, oh, we've got a, a caller on the line. We're going to go up to Canada. We're going to go up to Ottawa, Canada, to uh, Martin. Martin, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Hey, good morning, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. Are you a native uh, Canadian? Oh, for sure, definitely. Oh, good. That's great. That's great. Enjoy uh, the warm weather down there in Clearwater, though. That's that's nice with the warm water, too. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Are, are you a hockey fan? Uh, definitely. Oh, okay. How's your team doing this year? Uh, well, we got some key injuries there in, in, in Ottawa. so it's, Right off the bat they had some uh, injuries? Right off the bat. So oh. it's not looking so good, but we're going to build a stronger, thicker foundation for the future. Right? Okay, all right, good. Yeah, so okay. do, you watch, uh, do you watch Hockey Night in Canada all the time on Saturdays? For sure, definitely. Okay, yeah. me too. <laughs> all right. <laughs> me too. Um, you wanted, you wanted to look there. Just looking at TZA. Sure. Uh, Yesterday's candle was pretty nice and thick. Are we looking at uh, maybe for an entry, maybe try to retrace to that midpoint of yesterday's candle? Is that even possible, or uh, are we losing a little bit of steam here to the upside? So we, we might see that entry around the 10.30? Or? Well, you know, I, I would say what you want to do, I think yesterday's candle's in the uh, markets. And, you know, my expectation is we're going to see bulls step in and try to buy some of, the, some, some of this uh, weakness that is out here. So I think that, uh, you know, if you can be patient, you had a nice bullish engulfing candle, uh, you know, on TZA, folks, that is the 300% inverse uh, ETF for the uh, Russell 2000 uh, out here. Now, the Russell 2000 has been the strongest of the uh, indexes out here. But on the uh, TZA, what I would do is uh, just come down maybe into a, I'm going to put it on a 30-minute chart here and see if we see anything. Let me refresh my screen. Um, you know, what's the period of time? So you had the TZA breakout really at about uh, 14.30, so 2.30 uh, yesterday. Now, we'll get all the way back to that level. Uh, let's just take a look at a retracement here from uh, low to high, coming off of the 10 a.m. session all the way up to the high put in uh, this evening or this, this morning at 10.30. At 10.52, you know, might be a, you might want to scale in. Are you looking, because you're looking to hold this for the longer, uh, when I say a longer term, I mean for the next, you know, several days or weeks. Or what, What's your time frame for trading? Because that will be easier for me to answer your question. Maybe a couple of weeks tops if I can get the right entry and try to get a couple of days of traction there. But I don't want to buy this breakout either. Yeah. What I would do is, so I think that's a great idea, um, just simply from a simple retracement level, 1052 to 1032 would likely, likely be a nice uh, spot for you to uh, enter. Now, you're going to want to watch it on an intraday chart coming back with uh, volume, see what the volume is on the pullback. You know, where this actually broke out from your ideal trade is really going to be at the 1020 to 1032 area. So maybe take whatever your uh, whatever your risk amount is, and go ahead and uh, scale in to build your position here. Just like just like the Ottawa Senators, you know they're there gonna go. they're they're scaling in to build their team out there. All right, appreciate your time, Steve. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you, you too, and thanks so much for listening. Let's go to uh, Carlos in uh, Gardenville, California. Carlos, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How you doing today? Very well, Steve. Thank you for taking my call. Oh, good and... to hear. Good to hear your voice as always. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, today I have a question about T E C S. Oh, S S is in Sam or X is in X ray. S is in Sam. All righty, let's go ahead and put it up. What is T E C S? It's actually an E T E F. I understand. Okay, all right. So we're taking a look at T E C S out there. I've got my system working. The last time I switched over, the reason why I asked you is because when I switched over to an area in my system, it crashed. And I don't want it to crash while we're on the air out here. So TECS, are you in it, looking to get in it? Uh, tell me how I can help you. No, actually, I'm in. Okay. Uh, yes, I've been there uh, since 806. Okay, great. And now that it uh, seems like the market is possibly going to have to, I mean, it's not going to have to, but it's going down. Yes. Uh, I need to know where can I add a little bit more to my position. Okay, all right. So you ought to put a, a stop here uh, underneath the, uh, so if you're in at 806, uh, this thing really shouldn't get back below yesterday's low in the 820, uh, 823 level. Uh, so, okay. I, you know, so I would, I would also take a look at probably protecting yourself to the uh, downside out there as well. Um, as far as adding to the uh, position, uh, right now, what is this track, uh, if I, Carlos? Seems like tech, uh, uh, tech, 
tech. That's okay. all I know. Yeah. Okay. I actually got him from you guys. I, you guys were talking about one day. Oh, I, really? Well, okay. Yeah. I, I don't. I cannot go short Apple, but I can go short this one. Yes, yes, yes. Longest. Okay. All right. Let me put this on uh, more of a uh, intraday chart here, a 10-minute chart out here. And so a place to add in this, we'll wait for this thing to update. Uh, my system is acting a little bit slow, so I don't know what the behavior is, what's causing this out here, but um, it is acting a, a little bit slow. What a bummer that is. Okay. Uh, um, and, and so the data. So it looks well, like it's well, traded at 868 right now. I think that's yes. right here. You know, ideally what you could do here is a great place to add on this is a pullback into about $8.57. That was yesterday's close. And you've got uh, pretty good volume out there. There were 64,000 shares that traded there. That would be a spot where I would look at uh, adding to a uh, position in the uh, TECS. If I just take a look at the uh, retracements as well, that's also the dead cat bounce. That's the 0.382 level. So right around there. And the next spot that I would be looking at is right around 843. Okay. All right. Now, I have a second question. Is you the uh, Tiger Metal Exchange is still working? Uh, we've we've kind of uh, it's it's mothballed at the uh, moment because we're so focused on so many other things out there. Okay, because I have requested a kit and then I haven't received. Ah. He says they're going to send it, but it's not. I haven't. I'll make it, sure. So. I'll make sure that we send you. You send me an email, Steve at tfnn.com. All right. Okay. And I'll make sure that you get it. Well, thank you. You bet you. You bet you. Let's go to have a nice one. you. Thank you, and always great to hear your voice, Carlos. Let's go to uh, John in uh, sunny Philadelphia. John, is it sunny up there today? Uh, touch and go, Steve. Touch and go. Okay. All right. Well, the, well, you're the sunshine. You're the sunshine of our den out there. Steve, I've got a question. Um, on the euro, on the euro currency versus the dollar, it's yep. currently at one thirty-two fifteen or so. Yes. Very specific question looking at either the daily or the hourly chart. What, what in that chart tells you, tells you, Steve Rhodes, not to buy it? Great question. I, I'm, I'm, incli I'm inclined to speculate there's a good shot of a low forming right here. Okay. Of course, I could be wrong, so I'm looking to get your independent view of just that. Is it? Why? Why not buy it here? Now, what's the what's the time period that you would be trading it? Because you said Dow, the daily or hourly chart. So my answers would be different depending on which chart I would look at. Well, you give me both views. I'd, I'd be okay. uh, I'd be much obliged. Okay, I'm happy to do that. So we're going to take. We'll start off with the. We'll start off with the daily chart out here. Take a look at the trend. The very first reason why I would answer that question for you is I want you to take a look at the A to B equals CD down. Now, it completed a perfect one-to-one -one A to B equals CD down. Looks like that number was 131.630 was the exact A to B equals CD, and it got down to 131.664. So that completed that pattern. So to answer your question specifically, why I would not buy the euro here is because you haven't seen, number one, you haven't seen a, a bullish reversal candle. If today's candle were to turn into, let's say, a hammer candle, I would uh, consider doing it. But the real reason, and we'll uh, go, if you, if you hold on through the uh, break here, is because that B to C leg retracement was only a .382 retracement. But hold on, John. We're going to go back, take a look at the euro on the daily chart. I'll give John my answer on the uh, euro. The Dow is off 49. S&P is off 7. We'll be right back, folks. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market, something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for.
O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back to the Money Masters Show, folks. Uh, Dow is off 57. S&P is off 7. We're on the line with uh, John from Philadelphia. We're taking a look at the Euro-U.S. dollar currency pair. And we're both going to tackle this from a, a daily and an intraday chart. So on the daily chart out here, uh, the very first thing that I was uh, showing you here was the uh, retracement of the B to C leg of the A to B equals C D down. Now, what the euro did create was it did create a 0.786 Gartley buy pattern this morning as it completed that pattern. But what I want you to take a look at here, when I take I'm going to give you the bullish side and the uh, bearish side. This is the cautious side out here. The retracement, that B to C leg, that's coming off of the high from February 1st down to the low on February 8th. That retracement is only a 0.382 retracement. My, uh, my uh, uh, background on A to B equals CD down patterns, John, when it only makes a 0.382 retracement, it's going to make more than a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD down. Uh, 1 to 1 A to B equals CD downs are formed 60% of the time. The other 40%, uh, you will see something expand. Now, why did the euro stop where it did today? It stopped where I would expect it to stop after completing at least the one-to-one -one and completing a Gartley buy pattern. That Gartley buy pattern, folks, looks like this. If you come off of the swing point from January 4th up to the uh, swing point of uh, February 1st, you will see right here, it makes really a perfect uh, Gartley buy pattern at that point, 786. What a Gartley buy pattern has, it has an A to B equals CD down in it, and uh, because uh, uh, because of the influence that Larry has had on us with regard to Leonardo Fibonacci, you're taking a look at uh, it moving into a retracement area. In this case here, it, it has all of that. 
Now on the larger picture here, also on the daily chart, I would come off of the last swing point low back in November, November 13th, because our market's November 16th is an important uh, point. November 13th is an important point on the euro. And when it comes to the elevators on the way down, it crossed through that 0 0.382 floor. And right now it's really in between. So the euro has stopped where I would think that it would stop on a daily chart right now just to take a time out it is not in the overbought territory i suspect or oversold territory i suspect that we will see it actually move down there but on the daily chart it has stopped to where it was now uh, in the break i saw that you had maybe posted a, a chart up there and it looked like it was a trend line and so i must be using a different area of the trend line because it looked like on your chart maybe the trend had held in this case here if i use the uh, trend line coming off the swing point from november 13th and then I use as a swing point the uh, January 4th level. That's where I'm using uh, my most current retracement to create that Gartley buy. We'll see it's actually broken that, that trend out there. That's on the daily chart. So the daily chart says to me, caution, Will Robinson. The, if I were trading it intraday, that's a whole different setup. If I were trading it on the 30-minute uh, chart, I would tell you that you got a, a signal to take a, a long position here coming into 6 a.m. when you had a, a hammer candle form. You had two hammer candles. You had one form at uh, 5 a.m. You had another uh, hammer candle, and that hammer candle, actually the one that uh, formed at uh, 5 a.m., is actually held. That's the one that's been tested out here, and that was uh, tested here coming into that 6 a.m. session, and that was tested with another hammer. So we know where the bulls are hanging out. That red line going across my screen, that would become your support area. So I can see taking a uh, long, an intraday long position in the euro, but if you get it closed below that 6 a.m. session, which is uh, 131,664, it says the euro is going to continue to move lower out here. So intraday, I see where it stopped on the daily. I now will go down to the intraday to see where the bulls are hanging out or to confirm that bulls are actually hanging out there, and in fact they are. So does that, does that give you my intraday and my longer term? Steve, uh, thank you. You, uh, you gave me everything I asked for and more. I, uh, I'll just tell you, I... Uh, I absolutely love watching how you use the Anthem software with the Pesavento patterns, just doing all those permutations. Terrific. Oh, that's great. Well, thanks so much for calling, John. Always good to hear your voice. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman is up next, and then the one and only Larry Pesavento after Basil, Daryl Martin as well, David White after that, Ken Shreve, and then the Tom O'Brien Show from 4 to 6. If you're off to start your day, have just simply a fantastic, terrific Thursday. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Take care, folks.